Hello! In Stravinsky's late music you'll find a construct in the pitch domain that's called Retrograde Inversion Chain, or RICH in short. In this tutorial I'll discuss its fundamentals, properties and apply the technique to melodic phrases and transitions. While rereading a book on Stravinsky's late music, in the chapters on the compositional process and the creation of form, I was triggered by examples of a technique called a retrograde inversion chaining. The acronym is RICH and in this video I'll explain the fundamentals and properties of RICH transformations. After discussing classical music examples you'll see its application in melodic phrases and transitions. The book by Josef Strauss illustrates the composition process in Stravinsky's late music, say after 1950. Although earlier there was an outspoken dichotomy between the Schoenberg, dodecaphonic and serial approach, now Stravinsky starts to adopt techniques such as the Rich, to create hexachord phrases and longer melodies from serial source material. In the book there also is a reference to the Rich technique in David Lewin's book on generalized transformational theory. This book keeps coming up in my recent music studies as may be clear to those of you who watched the series on Neo-Riemannian theory and its use in film music. With an R-I chain one obtains inner coherence and symmetry in a melody. It is a type of growth model from a basic cell. So what is a retrograde inversion chain? It's a pitch domain technique that we apply to a given motif or melody, an ordered series of pitches, as shown here for an example with four notes in staff notation and a diagram. The goal is to create a chain of the original melody and a modified version in such a way that the last two notes will overlap. The first step in the process is to write the retrograde R of M by putting the pitch series in reverse order. Next we invert the retrograde, mirroring the interval classes around P4. The retrograde inverse then is transposed by a suitable interval, such that we obtain the two common notes here G and F. Finally we append a distransposed version to the original melody, while eliminating the overlap. We've obtained an RI chain consisting of six notes. We may repeat the process and stick more statements of this motif to the end of the chain, as illustrated here where the process now is applied to pitches P3 to P6. So we write the retrograde, its inversion and then the appropriate transposition. The final result, an 8 note long melody with 3 subphrases is shown here. Note that the third statement is a transposed version of the original, here at the perfect fifth above the starting pitch. Similarly, statement 4 would be a transposed version of number 2. The multiple statement RI chain contains repeating patterns in the pitch domain, as may be clear from the diagram in the top right. Listen to this rich example. The repeating pattern in a chain is a typical characteristic. We may calculate the interval properties of the repeating pitch domain geometry by inspecting three interval classes. The mathematics may seem a bit tough, but doing these calculations will help you in the design of a ridge with predetermined characteristics. We need three intervals between the first and next to last pitch in the original series, between the first and final pitch and from P2 to Pn. Each subphrase adds n-2 elements to the series and therefore after two statements we have 2n-2, after three subphrases 3n-4 elements in the chain. After two statements the compass, that is the interval between first and last note is given in this formula. When about to append the third statement, the transposition interval is calculated with the second formula. I'll demonstrate the calculation for most examples in this tutorial, as you will see. And here we are, with the most famous retrograde inversion chain example of all times, the name Bach, when using German note names. 
we take the first three pitches B flat A C as the original motif M and apply the procedure. The retrograde is C A B flat, which after inversion around C yields C E flat D. We transpose this down by a minor third and obtain A C B, with the two overlapping notes A and C. The four note chain now is the name Bach. Here are the interval calculations. From first to second note, B flat to A, the interval class is I, a semitone down. First to last note, that is, from B flat to C yields minus 2I, an ascending major second. And from second to last note, we find an ascending minor third. Entering these values into the formulas, we determine the compass after the second statement, from P1 to P4. And this turns out to be minus I, corresponding to the minor second, or augmented unison, between B flat and B natural. In case we want to append another element to the chain, this would be a transposed version at the interval of minus 2I, a whole tone up. The staff and diagram show the result when we create a six statement chain. In the Lewin book, there is another fascinating example from a late Mozart symphony. In the closing movement of Symphony No. 40 in G minor, there is this transition based on a three note motif E, A flat B that contains a seven-statement chain by repeated use of the rich procedure, with an overall two-octave compass. Here we see the retrograde B A flat E, the inversion around pitch B, and then the transposition by a minor third down. When calculating the three interval classes, we find that the compass after the second statement is I, corresponding to the semitone down from E natural to E flat. The third subphrase will be a transposed version of the original motif at the lower perfect fourth. Mozart appends a total of seven statements, but with an augmentation rhythm, thus combining two processes in the pitch and time domain to achieve this amazing transition. A more contemporary example is from the Strauss book and discusses an R.I. chain in Stravinsky's 1957 music for the ballet Agon. The framework starts with a five-tone pitch series that, through intertwined chaining with variable overlap length, yields a 12-tone series. The process is illustrated here for the first chain, with an unusual overlap of three notes, a concept that is not in the Lewin description of the rich transformation. But, after all, we are talking Stravinsky here, the master creator. Myself, humble apprentice, I will reuse this series in a later example. Let's proceed with application examples, first when creating a melody. This bebop jazz phrase, a lead part, is based on a short motif. We'll create a four statement chain from the four note series E flat, D flat, G, C, shown here. You may inspect the results from the steps in the procedure. And here are the interval calculations for the compass after the second subphrase and the transposition interval, which turns out to be minus 3i, a minor third up. Note that we may use octave transposition at any point in the ordered series. We apply a typical bebop swing style to the 10 note series, which becomes the lead part for flugelhorn. The phrase is in the key of A flat major, and for a four part section on harmony setting, we must select intermediate chords for harmonization of non chordal lead part notes. This technique is discussed in my book on arranging. The result is a closed four part voicing for horns, with appropriate phrasing, articulations, and dynamics. The rhythm section plays typical swing, walking, bass, and right cymbal patterns. 
Listen to the result. The second melodic application of the RI chain is a Latin brass ensemble setting. As promised, we return to the Stravinsky 12 tone series from the Pas de Deux in Agon. The full chain will comprise four subphrases. This series becomes the lead part in a tutti voicing for three flugelhorns and three bucket mute trombones. The melody phrase is harmonized in the key of F major, and the basic harmonic framework is a half cadence from tonic to dominant C7. Non diatonic lead pitches will be harmonized with intermediate extended chords, another technique discussed in my arranging book. The result is a six part close voicing for brass section with a jazz guitar doubling the lead flugelhorn. This relaxed Latin mood setting has a gradually ascending lead part, with a mild climax and more open voicing near the end. This demonstrates how Do de Cafoni can be turned into contemporary jazz. The final melody example has an R-I chain as the main melody for a shuffle rock phrase. The starting point is the 5 note series G, E, D, B, C sharp shown here. The full chain consists of 4 statements and the generation of the first retrograde inverse transpose subphrase is illustrated in detail. Each subphrase adds 3 notes to the chain and we calculate the compass and transposition interval after the second statement. This turns out to be minus i a semitone up, as the arrow from G to A flat illustrates. Note the white compass in the upper right diagram, but remember that we may apply octave transposition at any element in the series. After overlaying a rhythm on the 14 note series, it becomes the lead part for soprano saxophone, muted trumpet and electric guitar. This phrase is set in a modal key, with another half cadence E minor 7 to B dominant 7 as basic harmony, and we insert intermediate chords. Tenor saxophone, horn in F and two trombones play a sustained note background, first unisono, later in parallel consonant thirds and ascending to a climax at the end. The shuffle rock groove is provided by the triplet patterns in the bass guitar and the purdy shuffle on hi-hat. Where I see a particularly strong application potential for the RI chain is in the composition of modulating transition sections. I'll demonstrate that use in a short piece for solo guitar that contains two rich transitions. The starting motif of the first transition is an order 7 note series. We append two subphrases through the usual procedure with the two note overlap. Each statement adds five notes to the series. The interval class calculations show a compass of two semitones between first and last note. The transposition interval is a semitone down, as the arrow from E flat to D illustrates. The second transition is based on a six element series, again with a chain comprising three subphrases. You may want to watch my tutorial on melodic modulation that contains three alternative techniques for connecting sections. 
The form of this guitar piece shows three A sections, two transitions and a coda. Each A section is in a different mode. And there is a tutorial video on how to best write modal triadic harmony. The B sections are the modulating transitions that use the two RI chains. Read along with the annotated score. Here's another example that demonstrates the application of the retrograde inversion chain in composing transitions. This time we'll look at the music cue for low strings. The starting motif is the four element series D, B, C, G, which we will turn into a chain with three subphrases using the retrograde inversion and transpose operations. The interval class calculations reveal the minor third compass from D to F after completion of the second statement. And the transposition interval is the tritone interval 6 semitones. This 8 note series is used for the first transition. While we create a shorter 3 note 2 subphrase series for the second transition. This also is a modal composition. This time we use a single minor mode, Aeolian. The instrumentation is for string orchestra. The form is A-B-A-B -A -B coda. The first A section is two part in A Aeolian. The second A section is three part with violas taking the lead. The B sections are unisono modulating transitions that use the two RI chains. The cue closes with a cadence, returning to the original key. Listen to this slow, tragic cue.
For the final example we turn to a completely different idiom. Here a pulsating synthesizer texture where we'll also use a rich transformation for the design of transitions. The complete series will consist of three statements of a six note motif that contains inner symmetry between the first and second half. Verify this by looking at the mirror structure of the intervals. The outcome of the retrograde inversion transposition process and the interval class calculations is shown. From these we see that we have arisen by a semitone after the second subphrase and that the transposition interval is six semitones, the tritone interval. The total length of this chain is 14 notes. We use this series in a completely different way when creating the synthesizer texture. The opening pitch E becomes a pulsating pedal point. The A sections play the six note subphrases as ostinato riffs, while the transitions are based on the two overlapping notes. Listen to this series, immediately followed by the setting for synthesizers. Let's summarize this tutorial. The subject was the retrograde inversion chain as defined in the book by Lewin and used as a compositional process in Stravinsky's late serial music. I discussed the fundamentals of this pitch domain technique and the procedure for generating chains from a basic ordered note series. We looked at its properties such as the total chain length when appending a number of subphrases, the pitch compass, the transposition interval and how to calculate these properties. In the application section I demonstrated the use of the rich transformation for creating melodies with internal coherence and symmetry and, my favorite application, the composition of modulatory transition sections. Hopefully this will inspire you to start experimenting with the rich technique. If you like this and other video tutorials on my channel please subscribe and feel free to share the links. Support for my online education efforts is welcome and there is a link to a PayPal donation button in the description below. Visit my website for companion material and more content or purchasing books from the webshop. Thanks for watching.